Jesus. We know, God, the fact that each and every one of us that are standing here today, there is a plan and purpose that you have for us. We thank you, God, for whatever that we've been through. We thank you, God, for everything that we have been, that we have learned. Every trial, every tribulation, there is purpose in every pain that we've been through. The fact that we are standing here is only by the grace of God. If you believe that,
Well, good morning, church. Amen. Come on, I think we can do better now. Good morning, church. Good morning. Amen. All right, first of all, I just want to extend our warm welcome to our church family. Uh, we're blessed to have you here. We hope that this will be a blessing to you and you, you'll enjoy this time. Uh, also, church, can I ask if there's any first-time visitors by raise of hands? And the guys can help me out in the foyer if there's any first-time visitors. Okay, cool. So I think it's just our church family and there's one person there. All right, so welcome. Uh, I'm sure they can hear me and see me. Uh, to our online viewers, welcome. It's uh, good to have you with us and for you to experience the service with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've just got a few announcements to make and I'm going to take you through it. So starting off, it's the internship program. I think you've just seen the video on it. So this year, obviously, we've got internship program running in the church and it's going to comprise of departments like family, kids, youth, marketing, uh, that will consist of social media, design and photography. So it's something that the church is doing and obviously if you're that individual that needs experience, it's a blessing to have it and uh, being provided by the church and also uh, being in God's kingdom to see how things work. So we encourage you that if you are interested to please see us, contact the church, our numbers, you can speak to someone with information and then assist you directly. It will be a course of about a year. Uh, next church, we've got the family fast that starts tomorrow. So personally, I'm, I'm already prepared. I finished all the coke in my house, all the chips, the chocolates. So it's, I think I got a little bit left for today. And then we're clean from tomorrow. So I hope you're excited. The family fast runs from the 17th, that's tomorrow, till the 30th on Sunday. Right. Uh, during the fast, just a notice that the coffee shop outside will be closed, so that's for over the next two Sundays. So, good news parents and children, uh, our family kids opens next Sunday. Uh, it's going to be at both services. Uh, make sure you register your child and check them in. Uh, you'll get the link that you receive every week uh, with the message that goes out for you to register for service. So it's the same message, it's just a different link and that will help you there. Uh, we plan a good curriculum uh, for this year, so uh, your children will be excited to know that they're going to be learning about the Kingdom of God. Amen. Alright, church. so the next one is serve. And you'll see all our servants here. We've all got black shirts except me because I knew I was coming up on stage. But uh, we're looking for servants. We're looking for servants in different areas. Uh, it's going to be at the media station. You know, Darren's married now, so we need to help him out and make his team larger. Uh, there's, there's a lot that we're looking for and if it's your calling and if God has spoken to you to serve, we encourage you to come along. We've, we've got a good team together and uh, we'd love for you to join us. So yes, there's media, there's family kids, there's parking management. There's a lot of areas that you can serve in. So yeah. Okay, and then the next one is our Tuesday night services. So church, as you can see, we put the keep calm, so there's nothing to stress about. We're back. We're going live from the 18th of January, which is this Tuesday coming. It's going to be at 7 p.m. And don't forget, registration is essential for that. School textbooks. Uh, we have some in our church library, uh, resource center. So basically, we know that obviously the guys, the, the children have gone back to school and we've got some materials, some study guides and study materials in our resource center. So to help the kids, if they need anything, they should speak to resource center and see what we have available. They can use it for the duration that they need and obviously return it when they've done. But uh, yes, it's now available at our resource center. So that's the study material that will help them through whatever we have available. Amen. Okay, thank you. surrounded around joyful giving and joyful January to set the foundation for 2022. Um, how many of you know that God's ways aren't our ways? When I first found out that I'm doing the time of giving, 
but there's a whole lot of things that are scripted in my mind and on a piece of paper, and then this morning God just changed it off. So I think that God has a very clear message that he wants to give to at least one person that's sitting here or joining online. And I'd like you to listen very carefully to the teaching because it isn't mine. It was changed at 1 o'clock this morning and you just got to bear with me. Okay, so the scripture reading is from Romans 12, 8. It says, um, God's word says, if it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is in giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. This scripture was written when Paul was giving instruction to the Roman church of how believers can give of their best to God. When we give, I'm going to term this the three T's. When we give of our time, our talents, and our tithes and offerings, it should always be our very best and also right from our heart. Because you and I both know that the world, the earth, and everything in it already belongs to God. But God is watching our heart attitude, and he's looking for a relationship with us. I'd like to share a personal example of a time, and I'll share this unashamedly, very personal, very sensitive. Um, <coughs> so basically, a while back, uh, there was a colleague of mine that used to sit next to me and he used to always share with me about him and his wife and how they always religiously tithed and all and about that they also did seed offerings and they would call in the miracles into their lives and they, they shone in the blessings of God, in health, in wealth, in whatever areas he went into. And my heart ached because at that point I just had so many accounts or I was so overly committed by my own fault that I couldn't bring my 10% into the house of God. So I cried out to God and I said, you know what, I'm embarrassed and, 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 and heart sore and all of those emotions. And then I felt as though I need to start somewhere, whether it's with my time, whether it's with um, a, a portion of my tithes, even if it's not 10%, but I needed to start somewhere. So my husband Richard and I made an agreement that we would start somewhere. So we agreed on a percentage and we held that commitment. So we built on that. And when we made an agreement to each other as husband and wife, we then went to God and made an agreement and a commitment to Him. And you know what, years later we've held to that commitment because we made a commitment to each other and we also made a commitment to God. In, uh, in closing, um, my message to you is, you know, this is the month of January. Start off strong. Set the foundation of joyful January to know that this month and this year is going to be an amazing month Hallelujah. and year for each and, every, each and every one of us that is here. Let's give up our best to God in terms of our time, in terms of our talents, in terms of our tithes and offerings. Um, there's three G's that I'd like to highlight. First we did the three T's and now we'll move on to the three G's. Gratitude. In everything that we have, let's be thankful for where we have uh, or what we have actually whether it's our talents, our skills, our time, the money that we have, the tithes that we bring into the house of God, gratitude. The second G is get started. Let's get started today. Let's make a commitment to God and let's hold to that commitment. And thirdly is give generously. When we give to God, as we spoke about the three T's, let's give generously of those three T's. So I'll share this quick testimony with you. The personal sensitive uh, story that I shared with you, a while later, God has brought us to a point where we're actually debt free. Praise God. Amen. We couldn't do that at all. And, and that is only God, and I am careful to glorify God, to praise Him, to honor Him. Apart from two assets that we're paying off, there isn't any accounts, there isn't any debit orders right, that we have to stress about each month. So we know what it's like to stress about whatever and whatever and whatever. But God is good, and He's amazing, and He's faithful, and He will show up where we need Him. So as we bring our tithes and offerings, let us pray, and let us trust God for that prayer request, and whatever we're waiting upon God for, because God will meet us where we pray and have faith and hold our commitments and agreements to Him. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we praise You, we glorify You, and we honor You. Jesus, we are so privileged, dear God, that we can come to your house and we can praise you and we can bring.
bring our tithes, our offering, our time, our talents, and bring it into the house of God, dear God, and always give you our best, because you give us your best. Father, we praise you. We thank you for every hand that we give. Every hand is generous, dear God. Every, every hand that we do not give, Father, I pray that you will meet them at the need that they are. I pray, Lord, for every prayer request in this church, that, dear God, you will show up. Father, you are the God of the impossible, and we thank you that your word says in Matthew, Father God, that you will do the impossible. Lord, whatever needs are being prayed for, whether it's health, wealth, prosperity, interceding for others, I pray, Lord, that you will show up and you will answer those prayers. I pray with the family church, Doug, that, Lord, even though this is such a beautiful, fertile soil, dear God, I pray to you, Lord, that you will take our church from strength to strength, from victory to victory, in Jesus' precious name. Bless everyone that's here. Amen. Amen.
which they set out to do. And may that which they set out to do be in line with your word. Thank you for your presence. Your presence always assures us as we thank you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. You can take your seats. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If there's anything that we need, it's the presence of God. If there's anything that we require, it's the presence of God. And um, I want to just, I don't know if Labarden had made the this I can't remember but uh, there's calendars if you haven't received one you can get one at the info counter if you need uh, one for your office you're free to do so it's all while stocks last so please go there and have a look and uh, you can have that I just want to uh, speak about the internship program that you see come up there on the screen and that is a program that we are running as a church where we are looking for three candidates to spend a year here at the church and uh, they will be remunerated uh, during the months um, and we want to get skill, we want to get passion, we want to also during this year of this internship, um, you never know that God could be preparing people for the ministry. So I don't know, don't get excited and just run. Make sure that these are the areas, family kids, youth and marketing are the three areas that we have a huge need in the church. And so that is where we at. So you can send in your applications or call the office to find out more about that. This is not necessarily for someone who doesn't have a job. Now let me get this right. Because oftentimes what happens is people tend to say, oh, okay, let me try because I need income. This is not an income generating thing to, for you to get, even though you will get some measure of income, but it's, that's not the purpose out of that. This is a year to sow into the kingdom of God. And as you sow into the kingdom of God, I do believe that God is going to train you for your future. Whether that future is going to be in the church or whether it's going to be in the marketplace, you're going to learn many things. You're going to learn skill. You're going to learn uh, how to deal with people. You're going to learn teamwork. You're going to be, learn diligence. You're going to learn timekeeping. You're going to learn a whole lot of things. And so, wherever you are, online, in the church, put in your applications and we will take that from there. Next to that, I want to just talk about the fast that is starting. And I don't know, I think the sound, the guys are working on that. We need to just have a look and get all this ready. The fast that is commencing, sorry, I think maybe I'm sounding good there. But here, there's something. So, I know we're not at that level yet to have stage mixing and all, but we're getting there. So you better be prepared for that. Uh, 2020, we had a seven-day family fast. In 2021, last year, Jan, the Lord led us to do a three-week fast, three-week family fast. This year, the Lord has led us to do, much better, a two-week family fast. Now, I want to just talk about this before I get into this morning's word. What should I eat or not eat? I covered this uh, quite extensively last week, and I want to say that Many of us are used to fasting at the beginning of the year for three weeks. Some of us call it a Daniel fast, some of us go on a vegetable diet, etc, etc. Now I want you to know, and I'm going to repeat this again for those of you that are not here, as a family church we are not against the Daniel fast. We are not against a fast where you eat uh, vegetable only. The Lord leads us that way, that's where it will be. We've done it many times, we've seen the benefit, and the Lord led us. But this is what the Lord has told us as a church, and this is this house, and I want you to understand this and catch this from our spirit. In that a fast is not something which is a religious activity. It is not something that we get into just to tick a block and to say, I've done it, now God, you do your bit. No. 
This fast, any fast that we go into, is a personal decision that we make. It's not something that we advertise and shout about and speak to the world about. What you do in secret before the Lord, the Bible says very clearly that God will bless you publicly. Now why do we do it secretly? It's because the world has designed us in such a way and got us accustomed to show everything to everybody. I mean, you know, you get a new car, you want to show it to your friends. You have, you get something, you, you want to show it. And the devil knows how the glory goes away from God when we want to show it. And if anything, as a church, I want us to grow in maturity where we do not do things to show, but we do things to please God. Can somebody say amen? So during this next 14 days, whatever it is that you, and I'm going to talk a little in the next slide, what should I eat or not eat? You seek the Lord. If you need some counsel, phone me, and I will give you that counsel. Don't be embarrassed to phone me and think, hey, Pastor, what's he going to think of me? I'm asking this question. I learned something at a young age in school, Benny, that there is no question that's stupid. A teacher told me that when I was in primary school, and I caught that, and I asked many questions, and I got the answers. It's better to ask the questions and have the answers than live in doubt and not be in the will of God. Is that okay? So you're free to call me and ask me the questions. Now, how many meals must I have or not have? That's totally up to you. And if you are happy, no meals, don't let your no meals be condemnation to somebody else. Won't be to the person who brings judgment upon someone and you see them eating or doing something and you go and talk and say things to them. You might as well stop fasting. Fasting is not about eating no food. It's about getting our spirit man in tune with God and food is something that God uses because Jesus was tempted with food. But we got to get our minds clear of the evil that the world presents to us. Bad thoughts, bad habits, all of that falls under the umbrella of fasting. And when you fast, God gives you, it's not you eating a certain diet or missing meals. The Holy Spirit gives you the bread that you need. And we have got to depend on the Holy Spirit. That is why earlier on in the time of worship and prayer, the word came that we must not fear man, but we must fear God. And when you fear God, you don't become arrogant. You walk in humility because you know that it is God that you want to please. So over this next 14 days, what is the purpose for this fasting? We have to exercise our spirit man so that we can become stronger than how we used to be. And unfortunately or fortunately, any way you look at it, in January many people go and they end up going into fast and all of that. But really speaking, God brings a fast anytime. And if you are in prayer with God, God might bring you as a family, as a couple, as an individual, He'll ask you to fast anytime during the week, the year. Whether it's three days, seven days, two days, 40 days, whatever it is. And when you do get that word from the Lord, please don't advertise it. That's your personal blessing. You must be intentional during this fast. It is for your spiritual growth. And let me say, the Bible tells us that we must fast and pray. But all the questions that we get, and I want you to judge yourself. Don't judge your wife, your friends, your cousins, your neighbors, and all of them. Judge yourself today. All the questions we get as servants of God relates to eating and food and how to fast. But not one question about how to pray. God knows. 
knows your heart. Nobody on this earth knows your heart better than God. Your wife or your husband may think they know your heart, but yes, they may know a percentage, but God knows your heart. And you've got to purpose before God a measure of sacrifice. What is the sacrifice that I'm going to make? And I was talking to somebody yesterday and he said, Pastor, as busy as I am and as all the things that I do, I love peanut butter and toast. If there's no peanut butter and toast, and I'm not talking about a guy who does not have income. I'm talking about a guy who has more than enough income than he needs. And he says peanut butter and toast is what he loves. It might even be mutton curry for you, or rice for you, or cabbage and mutton for some of you, and Cornish curry for some of you. But let me say this, please understand my heart as a servant of God. You've got to make a sacrifice. You're married, you're in your home, you've got children, you decide you have a meeting, and if you haven't had it already, do it today and make that decision. What sacrifice are you going to make as a family? The Bible said today, he's got the last bit of coke and chips here. Let, I'm coming to your house, Levada. <laughs> so what is he doing? He's getting rid of the temptation. Take away the temptation from the covers. Put it away. And during this time, start with a clear goal. What do you want to achieve in this fast? Write it down. Don't just go in. You do that, you'll get no results. Be intentional and write it down. Ensure that you prepare spiritually. How do you prepare spiritually for a fast? You confess your sins, you forgive, and you say, God, let me start on a clean slate. You cannot start a fast having hatred for someone and gossiping for someone, you might as well don't fast. Start on a clean slate. And the blood of Jesus will do the rest. Decide what fast and how you're going to do it. Decide on the length and we know it's 14 days. Expect hunger pangs, tiredness, irritation. Oh, you got it, thank you. Expect all of this. You will get hunger pangs, you will get tired, you will get irritated, and you will get tempted. You need to fight those things. Fight it, because the devil wants to take you out. He wants anybody that's on a spiritual trajectory with God, the devil is out to take you out. Know that God is greater in you. You've got to know that. And be focused on what you set out to do. Replace eating with reading the word and prayer. So in your time of eating, in your lunch hour where you normally eat or, and all of that, read the word and pray. And I'm going to tell you something. God is going to speak to you. Lastly, separation, not only from food, but from worldly pleasures. Separation. I do believe that 2022 is a year of unity and if I can tell you as a church to pray for us Portia and I as a couple as we leave this church we're having a, a meeting this week and uh, we want to get the wisdom of God and the favor of God so that we can do all that God has planned for us I told you last year and it hasn't come yet but God knows we need more space and so we are at a place now where we are uh, in meetings. This week is an important meeting. Pray for us. Favor and God to open that door for the bigger premises. Okay? I'm giving it out to you as a church. Okay? The favor of God and God to give us more space. Whether He gives us that space here or whenever, I don't know. But pray that God will do that. Are we okay? Amen. I know time is gone, but I want to teach you today, as we get ready to get into the fast, every one of you would have received this 
next slide, and that is the family fast. Protect, teach, and use. This is the theme for the fast. God, protect me. God, teach me. In all my doings, in all my comings and goings and my interactions, in all my circumstances, God, teach me. And lastly, God, use me. Every one of you have the potential to be used by God. Every one of you has the potential to be used and God is waiting for you to make that next move. The slide in the writing in yellow says protect me and I want to just teach you today on the protection of God. And if I can give you, if you want to do some homework today in preparation to understand God's protection, I give you the story of Moses and how he was born and supernaturally he survived and he was able to be brought up by the daughter of the king. And you know the story of Moses and how he floated in the basket and they saw him. And that was at the time before that, if you read Exodus 1 and 2, you learn how the Egyptians at that time had the Israelites as slaves and they wanted to kill all the firstborns. Firstborn. And the reason why they said that was because they were increasing in number. If any time anything increases in number, it's a danger to the devil. The devil doesn't want that. He wants to multiply. That is why when you marry, he wants to come and divide that marriage and break that marriage because he knows there's power in unity. But because as life goes on, what happens is all of... I don't know what happened. All of life goes on. The devil comes and he brings and he... Are we good? Because life goes on the way it does, the devil comes with so many distractions and we give in to those distractions. When you read Exodus 1 and 2, you will learn how God protected Moses as a baby so he can lead the people to the promised land. God is protecting you and I want you to know that and sometimes we forget the little things that happen to us. If you want to get to a strong place as a child of God, if you want to be protected by God, one of the greatest weapons of spiritual warfare is obedience to God's word. Nothing can come close to that. When you obey God's word, you're in a strong place spiritually. And that is what a fast will do. A fast is going to get you trained to obey God's word. And when you obey God's word, this is what happens. Exodus 14, 14. The Bible says that the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. And you want to have the protection of God. Many times you are under attack by the enemy. And yet we do not remain still. I said they being still also means keeping quiet. Many times when we attack by the enemy and God says be still, we shout, we talk, we put on Facebook, we put on Instagram, we put on TikTok and all the social platforms, WhatsApp statuses, all that nonsense, we put what, are we, what emotions we're going through and it goes out there. Be still also means keeping quiet. You need to still your spirit man during the time of attack. Having a BM, who knows what a BM is? Doesn't show people that you are godly or in the will of God. Who knows what a BM is? I'm going to shock some of you at the beginning of this year. 
You know what a PM is? It's not a BMW car. It's a big mouth. That's what it is. Having a big mouth doesn't show people that you are godly and you are in the will of God. And many Christians have a big mouth. And God says, be still. Through humility, you zip it and you will leave it to God. Through humility, you zip it and you will let God vindicate and not you talking. Woo, this church has gone very quiet. <laughs> Our faith reveals that you will do what God asks you to do. And to get the benefit, we must trust the process. There's the process. The Lord will fight for you, so just be still. Don't go and retaliate, don't go and react, don't go and fall, don't go and do nothing. There was a, 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 a thing called an iron dome that the Israeli government had designed. The iron dome is a, is a piece of artillery that they built. And this thing, they're the only country that's got this dome. And so as the rockets come in, the iron dome is meant to thwart or to extinguish and to blow it in mid-air before the rocket reaches land. Iron dome. Israeli government uses that. That's one of the secret weapons that has held them and kept them safe during this, the, the years that they are under attack. That iron dome is effective all the time because it has got senses. And those senses are on day and night, day and night. They are never caught unawares. So that iron dome is always prepared. When you go through a fast, you are preparing your spirit man. And you will know when the enemy is going to attack and you will know what to do. And how do you fight the devil? You fight him with the word of God. You remind him what God says and you speak the word of God over your life. You don't go and fight fire with fire, but the Bible says you turn the other cheek. And we have got to learn to turn the other cheek if we want to grow. And if you want to have this defense system in your life and you want to have early detection from things that are coming your way, you've got to remain in the Spirit of God. God assigns angels over you. You want to walk in God's protection during this year 2022? God's angels are assigned over your life. God has assigned one year angels. 1 Chronicles 21, 27 to 29. And then the Lord spoke to the angel and put his sword, and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite, he offered sacrifices there. The tabernacle of the Lord which Moses had made in the wilderness and the altar of the burnt offering were at the time on the high place of Gibeon. Somebody say, what are your angels? You can call your warrior angels to attention in your life. God has given you warrior angels. And when you pray over your home, your property, your business, or whatever, you assign those warrior angels all over your property. And they will do the job of being warriors against the schemes of the devil. God has given you guardian angels. To guard you wherever you go. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And you're going to know that at the outset of 2022 that you are protected. Because if you are not protected, what's the first emotion that hits you? It's fear. And the devil knows that once you open the door to fear, then he has got you where he wants you. But Satan, you've already been made of no effect and not in 2022. Because we are ready. Hebrews 1.14, God will give you ministering angels. And not all 
angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Ministering angels are the spirit of God, the angels that will come and minister to you in your quiet times, in your busy times, wherever you are. Those angels will minister to you and speak to you. And God assigns all these angels to you. And lastly, link angels and the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. What a good place to be as a child of God. That we are protected by Almighty God. Now when you read Exodus and you go to chapter 11, you learn and you all know about the story about how God had dealt with the Egyptians and he dealt with them in such a way where the firstborns were to be taken out. And he said, put the blood over your doorposts and over your homes so that the dead angel when it comes will pass over your home. The blood of Jesus still remains. And many people have forgotten about the power of the blood of Jesus. When COVID first started, End of March and April, Psalm 91 was on everybody's lips. As the months unfolded, Psalm 91 is forgotten. Psalm 91 is not a secret and it's not magic. If you are walking as a child of God, listen to me today, and you are walking by the Spirit, every word in the Bible will come alive in your life. Putting a Bible under your pillow is not going to make a difference if you live as an unbeliever or a, as the Bible calls it, a heathen during the day. That's not going to work. During this fast and during the year 2022, I do believe that God will help you to have not the armor of God, but the full armor of God. And you've got to know that you've got to have the full armor from the helmet of salvation to the breastplate of righteousness to the shield of faith to the belt of truth and your feet prepared with the gospel of peace and the sword of the spirit. I'm going to talk more about them on Tuesday night. And you've got to be ready for having the full armor of God, not just the armor of God. Let's bring this to a close. Many people think that when they fail, Life is over and everything is ended. Failure does not mean that. I can give you many illustrations in our life when we failed, when things didn't go according to the way we wanted it to. I didn't get the job I wanted. I didn't get the place I wanted. I didn't get certain things I wanted. It was God that was protecting me because he knew something better. Failures or disappointments are set up. In 2022, don't be distracted when you get disappointments and failures. God sets you up for a blessing. You are protected when you are late. You heard so many stories about people that have taken the wrong route. They're on route to work and there's a traffic jam. There's an accident. They go another way. Then they realize what a serious thing could have happened. You could have been in that. God sets you up. You are protected also when, when you fall. And you are protected... When you also, as I said there, you take the wrong turn. Don't think that things are going wrong in your life. God has a reason. When things don't go the way you like it to be. God has a reason. You've got to trust the process. And you'll see now, how does God protect us? God will protect you to position you. And don't be distracted or discouraged by what is challenging you. A job regret in my eyes is God's protection in God's eyes. A shut door means God's protection. Sometimes God is going to shut the door to you to protect you. Don't think that God is not loving you. If you've applied for a job and you did not get that job, say thank you God because you know something better that I don't know. If you've applied for a certain, maybe it's finance or something, and God has not brought that your way, say thank you God, for I know that you know, and you've got something different in store for me. God protects you in His own way. And when we remain in a fast and grow in the Spirit, we are able to identify that. 
I bring this today to a close and all of us please stand. As you close your eyes and bow your heads. Psalm 46 declares that God is your refuge and your strength. God is an ever-present help in trouble. And therefore you will not fear, though the earth will give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within and she will not fall. God will help and break up day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war seeds to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations. And I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with you. The God of Jacob is your fortress. I conclude today, as you see on the screen, as long as there is someone in the sky to protect me, there is no one on earth who could break me. I've seen too many Christians that fear man. And when I say man, I'm talking about male and female. And I want you to get the breakthrough that you deserve because fearing man is evil. You don't fear man, you love man and you respect man. Some people can't even get up in the morning. They don't want to see that alarm ring because they're so scared to get up and go to work because they're so scared for their colleagues or their bosses or things happening. I'm not saying be arrogant with your boss and with people. But don't fear them. This year, 2022, change the outlook. Fear God. And your protection is going to come your trials is going to refine you. Your test is going to mature you. Your valleys are going to prepare you and your delays is going to discipline you because God is working for you. So Father, today as I pray over this congregation and get them ready for the next 40 days of a spiritual exercise, I pray, oh God, that they will from any negative talk, any evil agenda. Protect them throughout the year 2022 for purpose that they will see great things unfold in their lives. And I believe, oh God, that there is going to be a great explosion in the family church, in every home, in every family, in every marriage.